appreciate you joining us today for Early Brain Development Tools and Resources. Good evening. My name is Mary Lamantia. I'm the Senior Director for Child Care Aware of America's Brain Partnership Project. I'm excited to bring you this evening's webinar, The Science of Zoom. I'll share with you this nationwide initiative that empowers parents and families to play a proactive role in their children's early brain development. Zoom helps adults like us make the most of the moments already shared with a child, such as Vroom takes early brain science out of the lab and makes it actionable for you and me, parents and caregivers, or anyone who works with young children and families. They translate the science into user-friendly language. It's important to know that Vroom is based on the latest early brain development research from institutions that include Harvard, Stanford, Berkeley, New York University, and the University of Washington. Bloom's research collaborators are neuroscientists, child psychologists, child development experts from around North America. You will be introduced to a few in this evening's presentation. So simply, Bloom is a set of tools and resources that share the science of early brain development in young children. Bloom helps us to picture what is happening in your child's brain in the first five years or 2,000 days of your child's life and what you and I can do to help that brain grow. It was designed to work within the existing daily routines of parents and families, as well as within the existing programs and services that reach out to support parents and families. So basically, Room makes it easy for all of us to be brain builders. We are going to highlight some of the brain development research in addition to show you how Vroom resources incorporate the latest brain science, making that science actionable. In other words, something parents and caregivers can use during everyday interactions. But before we get into the science, let's hear from some of the parents who can give us a better sense about Vroom from their real experiences. This coming video will show you real parents with their children voicing their inner thoughts. Caution though, you may experience some technical difficulties such as buffering. So I'm encouraging you to look at the videos, watch the video, but be sure to focus on the audio. What is being said? That is where the key wealth of all of this is. And you can go on later on to YouTube and see these videos and probably not have the buffering issue. So sit back and enjoy this YouTube video. Yeah. Okay, girl. Okay. Uh, 
you don't really think of brain development at that young of an age, you know, when you're three months old. Whether we are early care providers, family members, or parents, we all have a shared goal. That is, we want what is best for young children, our children. That video is powerful and a terrific motivating, don't you think? And yes, those are not actors. Those are real parents sharing their thoughts and feelings. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on to our next concept. Room was created with the firm belief that children are born with tremendous potential. Much of that potential begins to show itself in the first five years of life. Did you know a child's brain, brain develops more rapidly during the first five years of life than at any other time, as this graphic illustrates? So, tonight we'll focus on those first five years. But don't worry if you have children older than five. It's never too late to build a brain. During these first five years, a child's brain is being built kind of like a house from the ground up. But instead of using the traditional hammers and nails, wood, and other materials to build a home, your child's brain is being built by the experiences and interactions that they encounter in their daily life. Parents and families play an important role in supporting this brain development. Even though we can't see what is happening, Every time we interact with young children, think of their brains as fireworks, the, the Fourth of July sparklers that constantly are connecting their brain cells and building their brain. This is exactly where Vroom comes in. Parents and families already do many of the things to help those fireworks ignite. Vroom shows how to turn these everyday moments in your daily routine into brain building moments. And it doesn't take fancy toys or money. Rather, it's through the positive everyday interactions you have with your child that builds your child's brain. So in this webinar this evening, in addition to the science of early brain development, we'll go beyond that science and make it relevant to your life as a parent, a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, whatever role you play in a child's life. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you a couple of examples. Throughout everyday routines, we all have those family chores to complete. I'm sure you agree with that. They may even seem more difficult when, present, when children are present. But these everyday moments are ripe opportunities for brain building, and you are that brain builder. So for example, when doing dishes, there is something we can do with young children that also builds their brains. And guess what? This won't even make a mess. Here's what I'm talking about. This is an example of a room tip. This one is called Dirty Dishes, Goofy Giggles. It's written for the family and the parent of a toddler. It reads, while you clean up the dirty dishes, show your child a dirty dish and say, yuck, with a funny face. Your expression should make your child giggle. And with, new, with each new dish that you bring up, use a new word such as sticky or goopy and see what funny words or sounds your child comes up with too. But there's more. On the right-hand side over there on the orange side, that's the brainy background, which I call the translated science. It simply explains to you the scientific reason why this builds a child's brain. So in reference to the dirty dishes, it tells you your child learns communication skills from your tone of voice, your facial expressions that they're seeing, your body movements, even your words. He also learns to love the sound of the words when you're using those funny words like goofy and gooey and yucky. And at this point, who hopes that the child is giggling and having fun with you? Now, you, the adult, should be having fun too. Remember, Zoom helps to turn 
an everyday chore into something fun and joyful between a parent and a child while you accomplish what you need to and staying engaged with your child. And remember, children learn best when they're having fun. So let me give you one more example. After another, another um, everyday interaction between an adult and a child is this tip about brushing your child's hair. It's written for the parent of a preschooler, and you determine that by looking on the lower left-hand side in this one of the orange side, where it says ages two to three. It, those are the suggested ages for this activity, but I'm sure you're brushing hair at all ages. Anyway, it's written for the parent of a preschooler, as I said, and it's called His Hair, Her Hair. So listen while I read this and try to visualize this experience that you would have with your child. It reads, when you are brushing your child's hair, talk to her about how her hair compares to others. You could say, who has hair that's actually curly like yours? Who has hair that is the same color as yours? Or even, who has hair that is the same color as mine? Now, here's that user-friendly brainy background that I was talking about. It reads, back and forth conversations like this about your child's hair compares to others helps her to learn to pay attention to what she sees, to use her memory, and to group things into categories, all important in the development of vocabulary and math skills, those pre-reading and pre-math skills that we hear about. This tip helps to develop an important skill, categorization, identifying what's the same and what's different. And at the most, all you really need is a brush and a comb. So you see, Zoom activities are designed to prompt brain building moments throughout the course of our everyday routine lives. To complete them, a parent doesn't have to have more time in their day and they don't need to necessarily spend extra money. Both good things, don't you agree? But during these moments, think about your child's brain and as if it's those sparklers being ignited. Yes, brain building is happening. Now let's dive a little deeper into the brain science. I want to start with a few key facts about young brains, so listen up. Babies' brains are born with tremendous potential, and they are wired to learn from day one. Babies' brains are born with billion, billions of neurons, or brain cells. And nearly all of those neurons, they are, those are nearly all the neurons or brain cells they will have for their lifetime. So they're born with all the brain cells that they will have. But those brain cells, scientifically described as neurons, are just waiting to be connected. About two-thirds of those connections, those connections are known as synapses, where one brain cell connects with another, those will be formed during the first five years of life, so birth through age five. But how do those connections happen, and what can you do? Building a brain requires those neurons to connect, and that is done through the interactions and the relationships the young child experiences during that time. Neural connections aren't just formed passively. Parents and caregivers play an active role in helping these connections form. So let's understand a bit more of this science and grow. Zoom is built on three key scientific principles. First one, those positive relationships I've been commenting on. The next one is a little more specific. It's back and forth engagement, the speaking, the listening to and the responding. I think you sense that illustrated in those tips that we just saw. And then the third one are life skills that promote executive function. Each room tip, like the ones I showed you earlier, promotes these principles that we know are key to brain development. And the room resources are designed to share these principles more broadly. So moving forward, we'll look at each of these principles one at a time. So let's start with positive relationships. I'm going to share with you some of the room science advisors, their researchers, and what they say about these principles. Zoom's sister program, Mind in the Making, is a professional development and adult interaction program that has produced some tremendous videos that are available on YouTube 
examining executive function skills. We will view a few, but there's a book by the same title, Mind in the Making, written by one of the other room, or the room chief science advisor and an early education leader, Ellen Galinsky. So starting from the beginning, brain building basics, I want to share with you some of the science advisors has to say, and this advisor is Dr. Sam Wang. He's an associate professor of molecular biology and neuroscience at Princeton. His focus is on early brain development. He calls this period of brain development a constant construction project where babies and small children are putting together the foundation for who they are going to become later in life. Dr. Wang places strong emphasis on promoting those positive relationships, especially during those first 2,000 days, first through five. Remember earlier I said that brain building is promoted through the interactions and relationships the child experiences first through five? I've said it a couple of times. Positive relationships are essential, an essential ingredient for healthy brain development. Brains are built over time. While genes provide a basic blueprint or a map, experiences and the environment shape the process of development and build the brain from the bottom up. Another science advisor, Dr. Jack Shonkoff, a pediatric researcher from Harvard and the director of Harvard Center for the Developing Child, makes a powerful statement here. When we talk about how the environment affects young children, we're really talking about, most importantly, the human environment. We're talking about relationships. There's no healthy social, emotional, and cognitive development in the absence of relationships. There is no development without relationships. Think about that. There's no development without relationships. Positive adult-child interactions are essential for room development. Excuse me, for brain development. <laughs> Room adds joy to that development and the learning process, as you'll see as we go further. In the following video we're about to see, another science advisor, Dr. Patricia Cole from the Institute for Learning and Brain Sciences at the University of Washington, shares more detail on Dr. Wang's introduction. She shares some of the technology used to conduct the neuroscience with the babies and elaborates on that delicate and sophisticated dance interaction between the parent and the child, and that special kind of sing-songy voice that is used in communicating with babies. So in this video, Dr. Cole will introduce examples of the second room scientific principle, back and forth. So you'll see that in action here. Again, I want to caution you, don't let the technology issue distract you from what you hear Dr. Cole saying, focus on her words and her concepts. Sit back and enjoy another video. What we're trying to document is what's actually going on in the brain and the experiments that we're doing now, it's in that period from 11 to 14 months. What we did was to bring the babies in, they wear a nylon cap with four pellets in it. And the four pellets allow us to track the baby's head while they're in the MEG machine. MEG is the most sophisticated uh, brain technology for imaging that we have. It's completely safe and non-invasive. So we get a movie of the brain, of particular areas of the brain, and how intense the activity is. And the mom, uh, Rachel, was playing with Elodie, her 11-monther, uh, while Elodie was in the energy machine. And you could see the delicate and sophisticated dance between the two of them. She would move her toys and talk, and she was asking Elodie, do you want this toy or that toy? Or do you want... Uh, should we do this or should we do that? She was playing with her and singing with her, and you could see Elodie react. She moved with her eyes, she moved to point, and she would produce a sound or a, a number of sounds. She would produce speech-like utterances to direct her mother. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
They are simply recording what goes on in the brain during that kind of activity. So our hypothesis is when the baby is listening to speech, and particularly parenting, the exaggerated speech, that the auditory areas are coarse with us, but that these motor planning areas are simultaneously lit up and also active. We use um, motherese or parentese to infants all the way through their childhood, so from zero to five. Parentese, unlike the popular notion of what baby talk is, is a simplified, really grammatical language that's in the here and now. So instead of a kind of flat, monotone, the way we often talk to other adults, it's got this sing song increase in pitch. It's hello, how are you? So it's accompanied by facial expression that's very dynamic, very exaggerated. After a lot of analyses, we have just take physicists and um, engineers and biophysicists to analyze these data, we can demonstrate that our hypothesis is true. It is supported strongly. The study is telling us that well before babies can actually talk, I mean, all they can get out is their first attempts at words and ba ba ba, ma ma ma. It's not only the auditory area that's lighting up, this broken area in the brain, which is responsible for planning to talk. What babies appear to be doing in this extremely early period is visualizing the actions. Their brains are simulating the actions that they would have to do to produce the things they're hearing their mothers and fathers produce. We've told sports stars uh, for a long, long time, they should visualize that they see someone do an action. You see um, someone jumping off a table. You should envision yourself doing that, making the basket, coming down the hill, skiing the slope, and your visualization helps. The image of the baby as a sponge, this was a discovery in the 90s. Babies are processing everything they see, everything they hear, everything that they experience, and they're processing it in a sophisticated way so we can now replace the sponge image with the sort of action brain, the brain that proceeds in a sophisticated way that the baby's brain is built for action. This mother and baby uh, illustrates that back and forth. The servant volley or servant return is there very, very early and promotes uh, development of all kinds, not just linguistic development, but also cognitive development and particularly social development. That's the baby that's going to move along in the chain of development faster. And that's the new discovery. What I like to tell parents now is that the study shows that when they interact with their, with their babies, when they do the simplest things like say hello or the name of a toy, it isn't just that the baby's hearing it. The baby's doing more than just hearing it. What the brain research is showing is that it isn't only that their eyes are lighting up. So if you can turn that baby's eyes on, you should know as a parent that you're turning that baby's brain on very, very deeply. So you see all that babbling and cooing? Even the toe counting you do and the singing you do are what prepares your child for language, for language growth. The baby is using gestures and vocalizations to communicate. That's their language. And when we are able to coo back, we create, you create, a beautiful conversation. In Dr. Cole's presentation, she referred to the um, Meg machine, and that was that um, huge, to me it looks like a car seat, um, that's really short for magnetoencephalography. You won't need to remember that. Meg machine, but that is the machine that's doing this fantastic brain research and documenting the brain development of young children. So you've got to see it happen. Let me share with you another room tip that helps illustrate this. Scientists call what we talked about the serve and return, the back and forth. And these back and forth interactions shape the brain circuitry, like the wiring. Here's the next tip. Again, another example of a room tip. This one is designed for the ages of zero to one, roughly. You see in the lower left-hand corner. And the tip is called changing chat. And it's written for the parent of an infant. 
When you're changing your child's diaper, certainly an everyday routine I know you have, make funny noises and see if you can make her giggle and coo, and then you giggle and coo back to her. See how many times you can go back and forth. Follow your child's lead and have a conversation with faces and sounds. So now let's look at that translated brain background. By following your child's lead and also responding, you're building the connections her brain will need for conversation and later on. Again, pre-reading, pre-math skills. So all conversations help to build babies' brains, even when they're still just learning how to speak, words and sentences. Then offers us this great visual. It's a resource available to all of you and simply illustrates how a brand new brain learns to grow. It's called the brain story and it was the downloadable handout that you had uh, that you could download and you can download later. We'll explain that to you. But it depicts how the brain grows and develops. Now in order for us to look at this a little bit better, we're going to zoom into the top. I'm going to read along, so just hear me out. Follow along with me as I read from top to bottom. A child is born with a new brain, and that brain is ready for anything. So from day one, those brain cells and neurons are connecting. Remember those connections were called connections. Their brain is learning like lightning. And this statement tells you, it's hard to conceptualize, but it's million connections per second. A million connections. So it, their brain is like the fireworks going off in the sparkler. An important key moment component to, of learning and growing is communication. We've just heard from our scientists how communication is key. So now let's see the bottom of this handout. Even before they are old enough to talk, babies are looking and listening and relating to you. They're absorbing it all. So just as Dr. Cole said, your hi, baby, is parentese, and it's helping them to grow. You are the brain builder. You are nurturing their future greatness. And room is something that can help show you how you can continue to do that. We're now going to review, we will, we'll reviewed one, but we're going to review uh, two of the fruit of room tips positive relationships and back and forth interaction. Now let's understand the third principle, life skills that promote executive function. So what are executive functions, you may be asking yourself. Executive function skills include the following, focus, being able to pay attention, working memory, uh, remember playing that card game, Concentration, where the faces of the cards were down and you turned them over and you tried to remember where the cards were and so you match them up? Cognitive flexibility, like knowing you can shout out on the playground, but definitely not in the classroom. And then last, inhibitory control, that willpower, like not eating that donut or drinking that soda or stopping yourself before you share something confidential or not reacting on autopilot. Those are the four executive function skills. Your brain is like the central processing unit of your computer. So building executive function skills is like constantly improving your operating system in your home computer. According to our scientists, quote, executive function refers to the top-down neurocognitive processes involved in flexible, goal-directed problem-solving. Executive function involves managing thought, action, and emotion to achieve goals. Obviously, these executive function skills are important to school readiness and school success along a child's learning continuum, and we all want those successes for our child. In the next film, the following film, you'll hear two more room science advisors. Dr. Phil Zalazo is a professor in the Institute of Child Development at the University of Minnesota and the director of the Zalazo Lab, excuse me. And then you'll hear from Dr. Adele Diamond in the Canada Research Chair Professor of Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience at the University of British Columbia. That's a mouthful. 
but you will enjoy hearing what she has to say. But again, I caution you to focus on what is being said more than the video problem. Here we go. Executive function is one of these broad umbrella concepts um, because it's defined behaviorally in terms of what it is that people do. What number comes after the number 10? It requires being able to keep information online. Being able to remember the particular context, being able to think flexibly, and it requires being able to inhibit a tendency to do what one has done before. Executive function, or what you need when you have to concentrate, when things are difficult, when things are unusual, when things are changing. If you look at what predicts how well children will do later in school, more and more evidence is showing that executive functions actually predict success better than IQ tests. Typical traditional IQ tests measure what's called crystallized intelligence, which is mostly your recall of what you've already learned. What executive functions test is your ability to use what you already know, to be creative with it, to problem solve with it. So it's very related to fluid intelligence because that requires reasoning and using information. If you ask teachers what it is that they think is the most important uh, determinant of whether or not children are going to perform well in the context of their classroom, they talk about children's ability to, uh, to pay attention and to control their behavior, all the kinds of things that executive function in terms of this deliberate goal-directed problem solving is important for. Executive functions involve the prefrontal cortex of the brain and several other brain regions that work in concert with the prefrontal cortex to make executive functions possible. This part of the brain is one of the last to develop, so executive functions emerge during the preschool years and into adulthood. They include another key aspect, this working memory, which is holding information in mind and working with it. Coming, cognitive flexibility. Being able to think about something in the new light. There's no more K there. He's replaced it with an H. Tell us the new word. Home. Home. Inhibitory control. So you want to inhibit distraction. There's also an addition at the level of behavior. No, 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 no. Where you want to resist doing what might be your first impulse but would not be the most appropriate or the best thing to do in, in that moment. Simon says, put your finger on you. Because inhibitory control and the other executive functions are so critical to learning, researchers are looking at ways to help children improve them. And while executive functions emerge on a developmental timetable in children, their use must be promoted. In this example of promoting executive functions in a developmentally appropriate way, Adele Diamond of the University of British Columbia shows the child a picture of the sun and asks him to say night when he sees it. This task is used to assess executive function. When she shows him a picture of the moon, he should say day or morning. What do you say when you see this? Day. Yes. And what do you say when you see this? Night. Yes. Day. The little boy is going on automatic and making mistakes. Mm. He was rushing himself. He wasn't taking the time he needed. But giving him time to stop and think helped. So what I did was to sing this little ditty. Think about the answer. Don't tell me. You might think that it's interference, but instead it gives him the time to figure out the answer. Now can you tell me what you say? Think about the answer. Great videos, really helps to illustrate all of this. So now let's look at a simple executive function room tip. There are executive function tips written for parents of slightly older children, preschool or kindergartners. So you see the age range down there on the lower left is roughly around three to five. 
This one is called eating opposites for the older child. Ask your child to focus, to figure out the opposite of what you are saying. You can say things like, I'm so full, and your child would say, you're so hungry. Or you could say, this pretzel is so sweet, and your child would say, it's sour. And then have your child take turns. The brainy science background tells us you're helping your child think on his feet and not go on automatic when you ask him to respond with the opposite. The concept of opposites, that there are things that are totally different, is one of the basic concepts that your child will use later in school and, of course, in life. As children grow older, these skills include reflecting and analyzing, planning, and evaluating. The skills continue to develop and develop. So Vroom has taken these three scientific principles we just went over, the principles of positive relationships, back and forth interaction, and executive function, and they've broken them down into actions that make up a brain building moment, that simple interaction and experience that you have with your child. These simple basics are called the Vroom Brain Building Basics. They're called the five brain building basics, and you think of these as ingredients for building a brain, it's kind of like a recipe. They make up a room tip, what a room tip is. So the first one, look. Make eye contact with your child and share a focal point. Or chat, like talking with your child even before they can talk back with you. Follow, let your child lead the way, and you follow by responding to them. Stretch, that's making moments longer by asking questions, related questions, and elaborating on what's happening. And then good old taking turns, that going back and forth and engaging with your child. The great thing about these five brain building basics is that most adults already do these things with their children. Simply, daily interactions can help children thrive now and in the future. I'm sure you can relate to all one of those. So everyone has what it takes to be a brain builder. Not that there's a teacher, not just a parent, but everybody. Brain building moments are all around us, in our daily routines, our simple interactions, changing a diaper, setting the table. They're all brain building opportunities. And any moment can be a brain building moment. Something to think about here. Dr. Dimitri Krasovskis is the director of the Center for Child Health, Behavior, and Development at Seattle's Children's Research Institute. He focuses on how early learning experiences impact children, and he also focuses on quality early learning environments. He says, if you change the beginning of the story, you change the story, the whole story. I bet by now you're wondering, how can you receive these tips for you and your child? So let's see. This shot is of, uh, tells you about the Room app. The Daily Room app is one of the amazing tools that Room provides. It's available on all your cell phones. It provides bite-sized activities, similar to what we were showing you already in those tips, that fit into your daily routine as we've shown. Signing up is easy, and it's free. And guess what? There are no advertisements in this app. It's available for anyone with an iPhone, an Android, or a Kindle. We'll learn more about the app in our third webinar in this series later on, on September 20th. But this is some of the screens that you'll see on the app. When it sends you a tip, you'll see the tip in the left-hand shot of the screen there. The tip is on the top, and the brainy background, that translated early signs, is down there on the bottom. So you have that right in your fingertips. And so that's sent to you daily. It offers you one tip a day at the time that you choose. So when you register, you get to choose when you'll get this tip sent to you. Then in the middle screenshot, you can also go in and say, okay, um, later on, maybe I'm going to the grocery store. 
there's one in there where, you know, while we're at home, we're sweeping or we're on the go. That would be the grocery store. So you can pick additional tips as you're at gout with opportunities to engage your child and you're out of the house. On the left, as I said, you'll see the tip. This suggests, these suggest personalized fun activities or games for you to do together, promoting those three scientific principles we talked about earlier, positive relationships, back and forth engagement, and those life skills that promote executive functions. With every tip, again, you learn the science behind how the activity helps your child build a brain, thanks to that user-friendly brainy background. The more you use it, the more badges you earn. You can even level up and unlock new features. And those badges are represented on the right screenshot there to show you the different types of badges that can be collected. And you can work on that over time with your child. After completing a tip, you can save it to your favorites or share it out on social media with just a click of a button. I mentioned that the daily broom is just one form of getting broom tips. You may see cards around similar to the ones you see pictured here. Well, those are actually sheets of paper, but they come in cards. <laughs> but they have broom tips on them. You see three of them on a sheet. They had also, these sheets can be downloaded from joinbroom.org. And again, downloaded for free. So you have the website up there, joinroom.org. Let me give you a heads up. If you go into um, Google and you put in room, initially you're first going to see a lot of information about cars. So that's why they have join room in front. So you put joinroom.org, and it will take you to the website, and then you can go on there and download the tips, hundreds of tips, all free. If you like the room Facebook page, you'll even see tips on your feed there. So be on the lookout also for posters and other Vroom materials around town. You'll see if Vroom has infiltrated all your local community, but you may be the first one to know. The Brain Story and the Brain Building Basics are also available flyers that are downloadable here at this point on the website. You may even see Vroom tips or those double O's on products in your grocery store. Um, the double O is like the logo that you've seen previously. Um, Vroom is working to work with uh, vendors such as Johnson & Johnson to maybe put a tip on something that parents use every day, baby shampoo. So that's certainly where a Vroom tip could go. Or Marie's Cookies, and there'll be a tip on there as well. They're pilot testing these in selected markets across the nation. So hopefully you'll be seeing Vroom around town, and it's reminding everybody that they can help build a brain-building moment at any time during the day because we are all brain builders. Now here's a listing of where you can find more information. As you see, the website again is up there kind of double, and then you see the social media platforms that you can go to as well. I wanna thank you for taking the time out of your very busy days, your evening, and spending it with us so you could learn more about the science behind this wonderful program called Room. Should you have any questions, please reach out to us at the email on the lower left-hand corner of the screen, room at usachildcareaware.org. Don't forget the dot between USA and after Child Care Aware. We will be more than happy to help you find an answer to your question and learn more about Room. Be sure to visit their website and also, come back for our next two information webinars on Zoom. The next one is Zoom Tips, and following that will be a webinar on the Zoom app itself. So again, thank you for your time and your interest. You are a brain builder, so go out there and Zoom. Good night, everyone. <laughs>